is a backstage instance implementation enough to have an internal developer platform? Or maybe it's the automation, or maybe it's the platform team. What is truly essential to succeed with internal developer platform initiative? In this video, we'll discuss on how not to fail with platform engineering. My name is Krzysztof Hałasa, but you can call me Chris. And this is Advisory Applied, a place where we discuss IT in the perspective of business value. There are three pillars I see a necessity to have in order to succeed with internal developer platform. First is an obvious one. We need to have the process of software delivery and lifecycle and operations covered with the supporting tools in order not to have a mess there, not to do things manually there and have an easy way for our developers to troubleshoot and manage the applications. Those tools are runtime, observability, security, networking, deployment, but also database automation, API exposition or certificates. Now this technology needs automation because having a platform, we are going to have a clear definition of what we serve as a platform team to the stream aligned teams, which what cognitive load we address. And we need to do it in a repetitive way and we need to do it fast. So our developers do not wait for our service fulfillment for them. And speaking of the services, we need a definition of operating model and those services. Operating model basically for a platform is an agreement who is responsible for what in each area of software delivery lifecycle. There will be platforms where platform team is responsible for almost everything besides business logic and implementation and business operations, even CICD included. But there will be platforms where the stream aligned team only need some templates on which they can build their own environment and manage it without cognitive load because they are fluent in it. Decision on operating model should be a result of the cognitive load analysis. And based on the operating model and recognition of the cognitive load, we can plan what the platform team will be serving as a service to the stream aligned teams and under which SLA and how we measure that it's actually valuable. We also need platform team. So there is only one entity responsible for both toolset operations and the service fulfillment. So we have three pillars. Technology, so we know we have tools how to build the platform, how to manage the platform. We have operating models, so we know the responsibility boundary between stream aligned team and the platform team. And we have a platform team, one team responsible for all of it. God, it looks so complicated. Can't we just skip this consulting bullshit, this operating model stuff, the services, and just deploy the backstage as the engineers do? Well, let's look what happens if any of the pillars I've mentioned are missing. Well, let's consider what happens if any of those mentioned elements are missing. So first, uh, if we have defined operating model and automatic technology, but we are missing a platform team, the responsibility for tool set are distributed between other teams. This distribution is affecting the platform service services because multiple teams needs to cooperate into providing one stream aligned theme with application development and operation capabilities. This requires time and effort, which leads to the frustration of developers. And without one person accountable for that, we can end up either with the nerd doses or the bustle because somebody needs to orchestrate getting all of those. We were talking about such scenarios in, in model number two. Even worse situation is when you have a platform team and automation, but you're missing operating model. In such setup, no one knows where their responsibility lays. We have technology portfolio, 
much bigger than it should be uh, because we haven't decided who is doing what. There are also a lot of overhead and technology upskilling required from the platform, from the stream aligned teams. So they have no time to business features delivery and operation. This is because we don't have platform services and we don't have abstraction layers and we don't have simply simplified services to use provided normally by the platform team, which is here missing. This is, in my opinion, one of the worst possible scenarios and yet a very popular one. So we have a something called platform team. We have all the technologies, but no responsibility boundaries and actually no set it up standardized communication. Okay, last, uh, the last scenario is very rare but I think still possible, where we have a clear boundary of responsibilities, we have defined communication and expectations patterns, and yet we do not have a technology coverage for a full software developer, software delivery lifecycle, or we are simply having missing some automations. It's rare because there is a tendency within platform engineers to cover the technology part first. So here we have a situation where, where platform is well defined, but actually not in, implemented. <laughs> it may happen in the beginning of our platform journey, like lack, lack of automation and the technology coverage uh, may result here with a lot of human work, a lot of errors, a lot of burden and waiting. Uh, so missing this part for a longer time is also a path for a platform initiative to failure because will end up finally in, in give me admin or bustle or nerdosis. As you can see, platform initiative is not just a technical deployment of the tools. It's not just building a portal. It's not just about the automation. We also need to know what we want to achieve. What is truly the cognitive load we want to address and our developers are having, how to check it and how to check if actually the platform is a success. So in simple words, we can say that platform, just like any other software, requires a business case definition and requires a functional analysis first. Good news is I have created a framework to do so. You will find the framework definition in my efficient platform manager course, where you will find techniques from the cognitive load recognition through the services and operating model design, ending up with the business success measures of the platform, building a business case for the platform and how all this relates to the technology selection and design and whom to sell the idea of the platform. You will find a link to this course in the description. And you already seen part of this course in this video, the part I'm explaining what happens if the pillars are missing. I really keep my fingers crossed for your platforms and we'll see each other soon on the next YouTube material and on platformengineering.org slack where you can find me. Bye.